What happens in the West is that there is no border between state interest and commercial interest. The, the edges of the state, as a result of privatization, um, are fuzzed and blurred out into the edges of companies. So in traditional societies, you have traditional, you have companies and you have the state, and they are distinctly different entities. But in the West, which is sort of has the most advanced financial flows and communications flows, these have blurred out into each other. Um, so you can't tell the boundaries between one and the other. So you see in the West, the court system are being hijacked by corporate entities to deploy police to seize assets. Um, so that's an example of uh, the control of in the most important elements of the state, the ability to deploy coercive force by corporate interests. And so when you look at how The Guardian behaves or how The New York Times behaves, um, it is part of that mesh of corporate and state interests seamlessly blurring into each other. The Guardian's concerned predominantly about uh, being criticised by these powerful interests, about um, lawsuits occurring against it, um, driven by um, oligarchs, driven by people powerful enough uh, to push um, a court case forward. Obama has given up on closing Guantanamo and has decided to reopen the trial process um, and we now have a situation where the, even the Obama administration says that 48 of these people still in Guantanamo are completely innocent. Um, completely innocent. Not, there's not enough information to prove that they're criminals, but they are completely innocent um, and that they should be sent somewhere and they're not being sent somewhere. So completely innocent people incarcerated for years and years and years, no trial and no hope um, of relief. Is that not because there's nowhere to send them, because no country will agree to house them? Well, no, no country will agree to house them, including uh, the United States. But the United States uh, has made them its problem. Um, the United States was involved in rounding up these uh, innocent people, setting up a process that was, from the very beginning, corrupt. There's a reason why they're in Guantanamo and not on the US mainland and not in an allied country. And that reason was to hide them and keep them outside of the law. Just like you have Caribbean islands engaged in money laundering, the United States was engaged in people laundering, taking people secretly, pushing them through black sites and taking them to Guantanamo. And that is the original sin of Guantanamo, that it was a corrupt process to evade the law and as a result, there's innocent people there. The so New York Times redacted a 62-page cable down to two paragraphs. And this is completely against the agreement that we originally set up with them on November the 1st last year. That agreement was that the only redactions that should take place are to protect people's lives. There should be no other um, redaction, not to protect reputation, uh, not, not to protect um, the Guardian's profits, uh, but only to protect lives. And so that's the corruption of their agreement that they tried to feed this material back. But we can compare it, and so we have an ongoing research project uh, to discover all the ways uh, in which the New York Times and Guardian uh, have abused that process and taken things from the public that rightfully they should know.